The sad truth of all great TV is that eventually, it must end. But these shows had a shot at living on beyond their years, in little known and often potentially amazing ways. Sadly, they never came to pass. But let's think about what might have been. I'm Will for What Culture, and here are 10 awesome pitches to extend TV shows that sadly never happened. 10. Veronica Mars Joins the FBI Veronica Mars is, without question, one of the best shows to ever grace the CW. But that didn't stop the network cancelling the teen noir series at the end of its disappointing third season, in large part due to low ratings. Still, creator Rob Thomas and Kristen Bell managed to shoot a proof-of-concept trailer for a prospective fourth season, which appeared on the season 3 DVD and took place four years later, with Veronica now working as an FBI agent. Above all else, it just felt like a natural evolution and one-upping of the original show concept, as the FBI angle surely would have resulted in a larger scale and more ambitious canvas for Veronica's next adventure. As brilliant an idea as this was, it ultimately never materialized, and fans had to settle instead for the solid enough Kickstarter-funded 2014 movie, which moved in a different direction. The character then returned in a revival on Hulu, which found her working as a private detective in California. That still worked, but considering the potential of an FBI serial featuring the plucky title character, it really feels like she never reached her full potential. 9. Mad Men's Sally Draper Becomes the New Protagonist Though several follow-ups to Mad Men have been proposed over the last few years, the most discussed one has to be the one that involves advertising honcho Don Draper's daughter Sally. AMC reportedly fell in love with the idea of a contemporary new series with links to the original show, and considering that the majority of its characters would be dead almost half a century later, Sally Draper was really the only viable candidate. It would be fascinating to see how Sally's life was affected by her father's actions throughout the show, but with creating Matthew Weiner ultimately nixing all spin-off and sequel concepts, it's sadly going to remain a compelling what-if and nothing more. 8. A Giles-centric Buffy spin-off Joss Whedon toyed with many different follow-ups to Buffy the Vampire Slayer once the original show and hit spin-off Angel began to wind down, and one that frequently rose to the top was Ripper, a gothic ghost story series starring fan-favorite character Rupert Giles during his time in England. Initially pitched as a BBC TV special that would potentially give way to an entire series, Ripper nevertheless got tied up in rights issues over the Giles character, and with Whedon being busy on the cult show Dollhouse, it sadly never got up off the ground. With Whedon's promise that the show would be dark and emotional, it had a ton of potential, and there's no doubt that Anthony Stewart Head would have continued to delight. Technically, it's not too late for this to be a thing one day, but realistically speaking, the ship has probably sailed. 7. An Audrey Horn starring Twin Peaks follow-up a few years ago, Twin Peaks star Sherilyn Fenn revealed that in the middle of the show's original production, David Lynch pitched her a continuation of the hit mystery series that followed her character, Audrey Horn, several years later in California. As it turned out, Lynch's pitch eventually became the basis for his surrealist classic Mulholland Drive, which ultimately didn't star Fenn or have any explicit Twin Peaks connections, great though it was. With her fan popularity, an Audrey spin-off far away from Twin Peaks certainly would have been a sight to see, but at least fans finally got their long-awaited third season some 25 years after the fact, even if Audrey didn't have much of a part to play. 6. Faulty Towers The movie has Basil hijack a plane John Cleese's classic 1970s comedy Faulty Towers is the example of a show that stopped before it ran itself into the ground, airing just 12 episodes over two series. But Cleese did in fact have other ideas up his sleeve for the continued adventures of Basil Faulty. Cleese envisioned a follow-up film in which Basil and his wife Sybil would fly to Spain to visit their feckless waiter Manuel, only for the plane to be hijacked. Basil would help subdue the terrorists, only to become infuriated when the pilots attempted to fly back to London, causing Basil to hijack the plane himself and fly it to Spain. It's a hilarious idea that feels very much in the vein of the original two series, though for undisclosed reasons, it never came to fruition. 5. 
Daria's Trent Lane gets his own series. As this cult classic animated sitcom finished airing in 2002, MTV executives sought to create a spin-off starring Jane Lane's older brother Trent, called Mystic Spiral, named after Trent's grunge rock band. A pilot script was written and eventually found its way onto a Daria DVD set released a few years ago, revolving around Trent's titular band and largely functioning as a biting satire of the music industry. It's clear from that single script that the new show would have retained the original series' cynical wit, but by 2001, MTV Animation had already shut down all operations. And that was, sadly, the end of it. 4. A Star Trek follow-up set on the planet Vulcan after NBC cancelled Star Trek The Original Series in 1969, Paramount pitched a continuation to creator Gene Roddenberry that would take place on the planet Vulcan and centre around Spock. Roddenberry ultimately shot the idea down because he felt that Spock's alien specialness would lose its meaning and appeal without the human contrast of the Enterprise crew. Though he undeniably had a point, it still would have been awesome to see the original series splinter off and continue its magnificent world building by examining the politics, social structure, and general mores of the Vulcan people. Star Trek, on the whole, hasn't really suffered for it, but considering how short-lived the original run is relative to its fame and popularity, it's a shame more wasn't done with the concept. 3. The Wire's political spin-off following Tommy Carsetti in 2014, The Wire creator David Simon confirmed that he pitched a concept and wrote a pilot script for a political spin-off starring Aidan Gillen's politician Tommy Carsetti. Simon initially pitched the spin-off to begin after the end of The Wire's third season, at a time when Simon was struggling to convince HBO to keep bankrolling new seasons of the show. HBO's response was apparently, quote, No, we only want one show that nobody is watching in Baltimore, not two. Though they certainly had a point with The Wire's consistently low ratings in spite of its universal critical acclaim, Gillen's pathologically ambitious politician nevertheless would have been a fascinating character to follow in greater depth, especially once he became governor of Maryland at the end of the series. Either way, Gillen sure landed on his feet, winning the role of Littlefinger on Game of Thrones and becoming a veritable household name as a result. 2. The Zap and Kiff Show when Futurama finished its run in 2013, co-creator David X. Cohen took part in a Reddit AMA, where he was asked which of the characters he'd most want to make a spin-off show for. Cohen replied that a Star Trek-esque adventure starring Zap Brannigan and Kiff was constantly considered, to the point that a backdoor pilot of sorts was almost made on several occasions. As for why they never got the pilot made, Cohen said, We were nervous that people would get confused and angry and throw things at the TV. This one really stings because it's such a brilliant and organic idea, allowing the Futurama universe to exist without Fry, Leela, and Co., while training the focus on two beloved supporting characters and poking fun at a classic sci fi series all at the same time. 1. A Sopranos Prequel Series in the 12 years since The Sopranos ended in highly controversial fashion, there have been numerous calls for creator David Chase to continue the series, either with a direct sequel or a prequel. Sadly, James Gandolfini's heartbreaking demise in 2013 put a kibosh on the sequel talks, though Chase has mentioned an interest in a prequel series that would take place in New Jersey in the late 1960s or early 1970s, covering the birth of the state's drug trade. Though Tony Soprano himself would only be a child at this point, it'd be easy for the likes of his father Johnny Boy or Mother Livia to take up the protagonist's mantle, or even Uncle Junior. We are now getting a Sopranos prequel movie, titled The Many Saints of Newark, which will include Gandolfini's son Michael taking on the role of Tony, with Alan Taylor directing and Chase co-writing alongside Sopranos vet Lawrence Connor. It sounds potentially promising, and Chase is incorporating ideas from his proposed prequel series in it, but given how incredibly well The Sopranos worked as a TV show, it is a shame not to see the prequel come to life as a multi-episode small screen saga. And there you have it folks, 10 awesome pitches to extend TV shows that sadly never happened. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at YouSlyDogU. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.